Brother, listen up in the rhino, listen up. Listen up, come closer. Because we teach you your heritage, that's it for you. Right? How you doing, brother? What's your name? Uh, my name's Johnny Milton, bro. Johnny Milton. Hey, Jarrell. Come on, if I just call you Johnny? Yeah. All right, Johnny. Okay, I got you, John. I'm Adriel. What I'm just teaching on right now is the love of Jesus, right? You love Jesus? All the time. You believe in the Bible? No. You don't believe in the Bible? So how you love Jesus? <clears throat> Give me uh, John. Seven. You said, you said I believe in Jesus. Yes, sir. It's like every yeah, white man out here believing their own God. Uh huh. Well, what do you learn about Jesus? What did I learn? Where do you learn about Jesus? Oh, I learned about him in the building. In the building, what building? As they say, even though he was he was supposed to have been in the temple when he preached, come to find out, we was all in buildings. We was all in buildings. Okay. Where do you learn Jesus Christ today? Where? Does it just a sign from heaven? Or you woke up one morning. Where do you learn Jesus? Jesus Christ. Where do you learn that from? Where? What mentions him? What? You said what? What mentions Jesus Christ? What mentions Jesus Christ? Yes. What tells you his when he was born? What his acts that he did while he was living? His death. What tells you that? What tells you that today? Because you wasn't around. You you wasn't standing looking at Jesus. And then you just lived all the way till now. Right? Right. So where did you learn Jesus from? Where do you learn it from? Out of the book. There we go. So you learn Jesus out of the Bible, but what I asked you was, do you believe in the Bible? You said no. no. See the confusion? But you believe in Jesus. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. But you don't believe in the book. I don't believe in the book because the white but man wrote it. The white man didn't write the book, right? Bring it up. 1611, King James authorized for the Bible, as we know today, to be translated to English, right? Because what you speak English, yeah. so you would better read if it was in Latin, exactly. if it was in Greek, exactly. if it was in Hebrew, right? Yeah. So King James, a black man, That's had right. the Bible translated to English in 1611. As a king, he had that power to do that, and he brought all the scholars together, the best of the best, and had them translate that Latin, that Hebrew, that Greek, that mean you can't read today. Right. That's what he did. Oh, oh, oh. So do you believe in the Bible? I don't. Great. So you're a walking contradiction. Because you believe in Jesus, but you don't believe in the only place that speaks on him. Bring it up. The only, the only place that tells you how he was born, about his mama, his daddy, his brothers and sisters, how he died, how he lived. But you don't believe in that because you say a white man wrote it. But give me Job 30 and 30. I got you. Because you say the white man wrote it, right? Yeah. They just gave it to you in slavery. They took it from you, then regave it to you in slavery. That's right. why they have such thing as a did slave you, Bible. Know, oh, oh, know, hold on, hold on. First came along, hold on, brother. Black who hold on, brother. Because we got to deal with that. I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in the Bible. Now, I get it. You say you don't believe it because you believe the so-called white man did it, right? They wrote the Bible. Because yeah. they gave it to you in slavery, our people, right? But trust me, this Bible is only for the so-called black men and women. That's only right. the Hispanic men and women. Only the Native American men and women. Right. right. Only for us. The Bible was written by us for us. It ain't for nobody else. Just like the Savior, Jesus Christ, ain't for nobody else. That's right. What color is Christ? Black man. Right. But how can you say a white man wrote the book? Come on. Okay. Read this for me. Read. I got you. I got you. I'm gonna show you some scriptures of color. When you work, when you walk oh, into on. a church, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, when you walk to the church, you're gonna see this. You will see a white man. Right? Yeah, you're gonna see this. But that's not this if the Bible, right? That's not according to the Lord. We're gonna get that next week. We're gonna show you Job, a prophet of God, is black, so called black. Then we're gonna show you Jesus Christ himself. Come so on, what you just said. I believe he's black. Hold on, hold on. Let's have a scripture speak. Read. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. Listen okay. up, listen up. Because Jesus. My skin is, is white? black is white upon me. What did Job say? My skin is black upon me. Job said his skin is black upon him. Now get me um, the Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Job said my skin is black upon me. Right? Is Job, was he not a prophet? Was he not a man of the Lord? Okay, so the prophet was black, right? One of the prophets in the Bible was black. Now I'm going to show you, you know who King Solomon is? King Solomon. Black man, right? And we're going to prove you thus saith the Bible. Read that. The Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black, but comely. He said, I am black, but comely. King Solomon is a so called black man. He said, I am black, but comely. What does that mean? I'm black with you. 
Yeah, you see this dark tan on me. You see I'm kissed by the sun and I'm beautiful. Bring it out. And I'm stepping out. And he had the locks in his head. And he had the gold up in there. And he had the jewels on. I'm black and beautiful. Right. Now this image right here. He said I'm black and beautiful. Right. Now give me Revelation 1 and 14. Let me show you. Listen up, sister. Let me show you the greatest man that ever walked this earth. What color he was. Because you said he was black. You said he was black. You say you believe on him. But you don't believe in his Bible. But the only way you can know of him is through his Bible. Bring it up. And I'm going to get you that in John. Read this. Start at verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh-huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ. It said the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does that mean, Maurice? The revelation of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You hear me? You, you, you lost. Stick with me. Stick with me. I know, hey, that's what we got it for. We got these images to get your mind going, right? So, pay attention to this image for me right now. All right? Read that again for him. The revelation of Jesus Christ. He said the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? The revelation. Revelation. Yes, sir. What does revelation mean? Reveal. Reveal. You agree with that, Maurice? That revelation means to reveal. Yeah. So. LA. LA. Yeah, LA. Yeah, I mean. The other brother was Maurice. Oh, excuse me. Excuse my apologies. LA. I got you. So, what's your name, sister? Regina. Regina. So, LA and Regina. It said the revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning the revealing of Jesus Christ. Jump down to 14. Let's see what reveals Christ. Because you won't find this anywhere else. Authentically, right? Read. Verse 14. Listen up, brothers. Listen up. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It said Christ's head and his hairs were white in color and woolly in texture. What people has that texture? You agree with that? No. You don't. So you don't believe that so-called black men and women have woolly like hair after losing. You don't believe that? Okay, I can say yes. Okay. Woolly. All right. Now, why don't you believe that other part? I mean, I when you look at the picture, I mean, it just looks like a senior, a great, a great, a black person with gray hair. Uh huh. But you're right. Right. All praise. The Bible is right. right. That's what I'm reading from. It's not my thoughts. It's not right. my opinions. It's thus saith the Bible. Thus saith the Lord. Right. Jesus Christ is a so-called black man. Thus saith the Bible. That's right. right. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes was a, were as a flame of fire. And his eyes was as, as a flame of fire because he drank wine. What's Christ's first miracle? Christ's first miracle. He turned water into wine. He turned water into wine. You got both of your buds out? All right. Christ, his first miracle was he turned water into wine. Right? So Christ, he drank wine in moderation. And through that, the whites of his eyes, when we drink a little bit, our eyes turn red. So that's what the scripture is talking about. He wants you no laser beams, nothing like that. He just sip a little bit. Right? Get up. Get five verse 23 Yes, sir. Go ahead and get that. Because we're going to show you, let's see if the Bible, that Line upon line, this image is false. Line upon line, it's a lie. This is a truer depiction. Now, we're not saying Christ looks exactly like this. That's not what we're saying. We're saying this is a truer depiction of Christ than these images that our slave masters gave us. Right. That right. our slave masters gave us. Read this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 29. Bring it out. Who have woe? Who have sorrow? Who have contentions? Who has babbling? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? <coughs> redness of eyes. It listed all those things. Who has those things, right? Because Christ did he sin? No. But it was just talking about being hurt, about being wounded. Then give me Genesis 49. Me, keep reading for me. They that tarry long at the wine, uh -huh. they that go to seek mixed wine. Read that top part starting with the eyes. Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. So, a consequence of drinking wine, it says tarry at the wine. Christ wasn't drunk, but he did sip in moderation. And through that, through time, his eyes turn red. Read. They that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red. Go ahead, give me Genesis 45. So, that clearly let lets you know from drinking wine, and I'm gonna live an example, he'll live an example, and we sip a little bit, the eyes gonna turn red. 
That's just how it is. That's a trait of our people, right? That's the say of the Lord. Now what I want to read. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. Listen up, sister, listen up. Because we're showing who this is according to the Bible. Who is this? What would y'all say this is? Who? The white man is Jesus. The white man is Jesus. You agree with that, sister? What about you? The white man is Jesus, right? It's not our Jesus. Not my Jesus. Not my Jesus. That's that the Lord. Christ is a so-called black man. That's right. That's who Christ is. And we showing you that line upon line. Read. His eyes shall be red with wine. It shall be red with what? With wine. Christ's eyes was red with wine. Now jump back to Revelation. Listen up. Listen up. We talking about who the greatest man that ever walked this earth and how he looked. That we've been lied to our whole lives. That we was told our slave master was our savior. Our slave master was our hero. He the one that's killing us, right. murdering us, raping us. But he gonna come from the sky and save you? What, from other white people? What's this right, that mean? A black man is gonna crack that sky and save you from all your enemies. Right. Right. Whether that be white, Chinese, Arab, he gonna save you from all of them. And if you ain't right, he gonna kill you too. Right. If you ain't doing thus saith the Lord, he gonna kill you too. Right. That's the Messiah we worship. That's right. not the soft spoken white man that you've been given. Red man that you've been given. Read this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. White like wool. White like wool. I see them, my young brother, right there. White like wool, but his is black and woolly. Read, because he's a young man. Read. Right. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. From drinking wine. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass. What color is brass? Yes, sir. What color is brass, Ellen? Gray. Gray? What about you, sis? What color is brass? It's like a golden bronze. Golden bronze. What about you, sis? Bronze. What about you? Bronze. bronze. Okay, so you say gray. Now, anybody have bronze? You got a picture for most. Go ahead and check out the picture. We're going to show you what fine brass is. Because y'all hitting on something. Y'all sisters are absolutely correct. Bronze is so-called golden brownish tint. That's what it is. So right now, we read that Christ is what type of brass? Read. As if they burn in a furnace. So I'm showing the pictures he's showing you. Brass and if it's burned in a furnace. Look at that closely. That's what Christ's skin tone resembled. Look at that closely. That's what his skin tone resembled. Christ wasn't just no black brother out here. He was black, black. It said as, as if it burned in a furnace. If you burn anything, what color would it be? Black. So it's no getting around that Jesus Christ would today be called a Negro, right. African American. That's, right. That's what Christ would be called today if he walked this earth. So he's not a so-called white man according to the Bible. Right. LA, I'm, I'm harping on this because you say you believe in Christ, but you don't believe in the Bible because of the white man. Because you believe he wrote the book. Guess what? The white man's destruction is in this book. Right. His destruction of his whole entire race is in this book. Our destruction is in this book if we don't keep God's commandments. That's right. So that's said the Lord. This is how Christ looks more closely, more resembling than this image right here. You believe that? What about you, sis? Absolutely. All praises. What about you, sis? You believe, believe that Christ is so-called black man? I, I do. You got I you a flyer? Yeah, I'm trying to stop. All right, if you want to learn more, check out the contact info on the back. I will. All right, so give me uh, Psalm 68 and 11. I don't know dietary. Please. Dietary? Okay. We got you, sis. Whatever questions you have, we got you. All right? What I don't know, my brothers know. So whatever questions you got, we got you. All right? So Psalm 68 and 11, we're going to show L.A. that the white man did not write this book. King James, a king, authorized for it to be translated into English, what me and you speak today. Right. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word? The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word in late? The Lord. You believe that, sis? Absolutely. The Lord gave the word. What is the word? The Bible. The Bible. Just back then, it wasn't the Bible. It was just records. It was letters. It wasn't as compact as you see now, as summarized as you see in numbers and chapters and verses. 
That's, that wasn't how it was written. It was letters, it was scrolls sent back and forth, right? But today, we have it broken down to more, it's easier to digest, right? Because now I can call a book, a chapter, and a verse for them. Yeah, we couldn't understand that. How could an Englishman? Because I said a key word before, scholars. You know what a scholar is? There's a high school, for example, we go to high school, K, they say pre-K through 12, right? High school. And then you have some people that go to what? They call a higher education, which would be college. Generally, four years for a bachelor, right? And then, what's six years? A master's. Master's. What's eight years? A doctor. Say it again. Yes, sir. So, eight years, what's that? A doctorate. Then after you get your doctorate and you keep going, eventually you'll become a scholar. A learn, a well-learned person. And generally it's for a specific topic. Because guess what? You can't become well-learned if you study this and you study this and you study that. And you study in the ground and dirt and bugs, and then you try to study the sky, and then you try to study the way people think, then you're trying to study habits. You're not gonna become a scholar of those things because now you're just a jack of all trades. But a scholar, somebody that has specialized, has studied, has learned, generally one specific thing over a multitude of years. You got what I want? Read that. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Great was the company of those that published it. What does publish mean? Yes, sir. To publish. Right, to broadcast or generally, like you said, to broadcast or uh, send it out to the people. You have published an article, right? So you have written something like you said, you have sent it out to the people, to the masses. So it said, great was the company. Because when you read this Bible, there was many prophets. But then guess what? King James came along and he gathered scholars. He gathered scholars from the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Those that were specialized in speaking Greek, Latin, Hebrew. King James did, and he did that for the English version of the Bible. The English version, because guess what, at the time, the church, mainly they could speak Latin. Like you said, how, how can we understand English or Latin back at that time? Scholars did, they well studied men. And then he had them to break it down to English, for the common folk, right? So now me and you, we can pick up the Bible today. We can pick up the Bible today and read for ourselves that Christ was in this image right here. Right. That's the importance of that. So you can read for yourself. Mm. It say woolly hair, it say fine brass, it say burnt in the furnace. And I don't know what Jesus they've been telling me about. That don't sound like the white man to me. That's what you can do today. And guess what? What do they tell you in slavery about reading? That is, you shouldn't. You couldn't read. You couldn't read. Not that you shouldn't. Right. You couldn't read on, on the punishment right. of what? Whoop. Yeah, that's that's light. They catch you reading the Bible, you getting put to death. They catch you reading, period, you getting put to death. Let alone the Bible, if they're not the ones teaching you. Right. Love your masters, obey your masters, all things. Mike Mike gouge your eyes out to set an example for them kids and for the other people. Whoa, whoa. I ain't never gonna touch a Bible in my life. They done gouged his eyes, they done burned his eyes out. They done, they done tortured him, made him suffer. You won't pick up a Bible. You see that happen in front of you? Your kids, see that happen in front of them? They won't touch a Bible. But guess what? The Bible says Christ looked like this. That's why they forbid it in slavery. Don't you, y'all niggas better not touch a Bible. Why? Because then you'll find out who you are, that's it, the Lord. Right. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? My name is Yehoshua. Um, I'm going to just tell you why I like that scripture so much. Everybody understands who the Lord is, right? right. Who's the Lord? The Lord is my, my, my Lord and Savior. Yeah, what's his name? Jehovah. Okay, okay. What is he commonly known to everybody else? Yahweh, God. Okay, what's his son's name? Jesus. Jesus. You agree with that? The Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's a different pronunciation, right? A different transliteration, right? Because J wasn't in Hebrew. Right. But we all understand that our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, right? Right. All right, so we just read Psalm 68 and 11. Now, we read Revelation 1 and 14 to show you what Jesus
Come on. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 11. Uh -huh. The Lord gave the word. The Bible says the Lord gave the word, Jesus Christ, a so-called Negro. Right? Read. Great was the company of those that published it. So for everybody that says that the Bible is a white man's book, how can that be true? The Lord gave the word, and we understand now that the Lord is a so-called what? Black man. So who wrote the Bible? A so-called black man. That's a so-called right. Negro. It's impossible for the Bible to be the white man's book. It's telling you right here, plain English, that the Lord is a so-called black man, and he gave the word. These are his words. That was it. That was it. I love that scripture. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.